Hey, you're at Steve Tech. I'm Steve. And uh, we're going to go over today proper etiquette on chassis dynoing and how a chassis dyno actually works compared to like an engine dyno or even a wheel dyno to a hub dyno. So, this is a, a truck that we just got done with. And so, the first thing I want to go over with you is the proper etiquette. So, when you get ready to go take your uh, any truck, car, whatever you're going to do to the chassis dyno, Make sure that A, the thing's running. B, the thing moves back and forth on its own, all right? It, it, we can fix all this stuff, but it is so hard to get in and uh, do all those kind of uh, prepping things when um, you, know, you can do it uh, there and save yourself a lot of time and money. Because if I'm doing it, I'm gonna have to charge it because it's gonna take time and hours to figure out wiring, figure out all that kind of stuff. So make sure it's all running, make sure it's all moving. Uh, all the basics are ready to actually start running like you would run it down the track. All right, now let's go back over here. You can see how it gets strapped down. Uh, some of them, some chassis dynos will be flat on the floor. Mine is also a lift, so I can uh, lift and work on it all at the same time. And mine is a, a eddy current uh, add-on, so it's a, it's a dyno jet. Uh, with eddy current added on so the eddy currents on the other side, but this is the drum So what you're actually doing with a well, let's go back to just the the, the hooking up It's gonna be need places for it to be strapped to the front That's securing it. So the car is not gonna go backwards Then you need to wrap around the axles in the proper location And you're the guy that you know is doing the chassis dyno for you or myself is gonna hook it all up in the proper spot but you see how much needs to be wrapped around the axles to keep the car from going side to side and obviously to keep it from going forward. Now, on a uh, wheel dyno, like what this is, the wheel dyno uh, actually measures acceleration, which means it's actually measuring horsepower. It is not measuring torque. It back calculates torque. It's just a math channel. They do not measure torque. They actually back calculate it off of how fast you accelerate the drum. So that's the actual uh, horsepower. And you know, if you ever see, go back and kind of look in a dictionary or whatever online, you can kind of see, you know, how fast a horse could move this amount of weight in this amount of time. So that's exactly what you're doing here. We're spinning this drum see the knurling on it spinning this drum which has a X amount of weight and I think this drum is I think this drum is 6,000 pounds I can't really remember but I think it's 6,000 pounds so how fast you accelerate that is how fast uh, or how much horsepower it is generating and then like I said it back calculates to give you a torque number based on your RPM signal now uh, this is why it's also a little confusing in that They'll make the typically they'll make very close to the same amount of horsepower unless it is something to do with the uh, converter, or how something else is reacting in the car, um, regardless of what gear it is in. Because you got to keep in mind it's accelerating and it knows that it's accelerating this weight from this RPM to the next RPM, and it knows that you know accelerating it from let's say let's go back to mile an hour that it's accelerating that drum from 100 mile an hour to 200 mile an hour takes more horsepower than it does to accelerate it from a zero to a hundred. So there's a bunch of math that's all involved in there, but I just wanted to show you that. Also, you know, compared to what the engine dyno is. Now the engine dyno, we'll go over there, look at it real quick. Now the engine dyno does exactly the opposite. Engine dynos, all engine dynos, measure horse or measure torque, the twisting motion, and not horsepower. They calculate horsepower, measure torque. Chassis dynos measure horsepower, calculate torque. So this is measuring torque and calculating the horsepower. So that's why you know we have the drive shaft. This is all our custom stuff that I build for all of this, including the absorbers and internals of everything. So it's applying a load just like what a torque converter does. Hint, hint, 
torque converter does. So we measure the load, the torque that is putting on rotational torque that is putting on the, this load cell. And then it calculates based on what RPM it is, it calculates uh, the horsepower. We'll talk more about that on a complete engine dyno uh, video that I'll do later. But as we go back into doing the uh, chassis dyno, we can see that <clears throat> we have it all strapped down, the thing's running. Then we are gonna go, uh, we understand how the dyno works. It still does corrections based off of air and temperature. Um, you're gonna be, uh, that's the box down there. You can see that. That's all the electronics. So it's measuring air temperature, water grain. So it's calculating and figuring all that out. Then sends that all to here. So this is our screen and what you're all gonna be looking at. Now we can come up here. Everybody's got a little bit different. Uh, obviously, uh, Dino Jet is one of the most common ones. Mustang, uh, stuff like that. And the upper actual operation of it, it's all going to be you know the operator of it so um, you know that's not that big a deal now the difference in between a wheel dyno and a hub dyno now you can see we have all these straps it's strapping down it's having to spin this drum now a, a hub dyno is a eddy current dyno and it is measuring from what I understand could be wrong but I don't think so it is measuring torque calculating horsepower uh, also uh, if you take any vehicle off of a wheel dyno and put it on a hub dyno it will make more horsepower back to back like literally take this truck move it over here put it on a hub dyno and it makes more horsepower than it just did on a wheel dyno that is because the hor the horsepower is lost through the actual tire not from slippage but the actual tire how, how much air pressure is in the tire. You're spinning the weight of the tire. You're spinning all of those things. You take the hub dyno and there's no wheel there. So it's also helping you to eliminate the inertia weight from the wheel. You have a straps that are strapping it down that's putting load on everything. So all the time, wheel dynos will make less horsepower than a hub dyno. Back to back. It's just the way it is. So every time you see hub dyno numbers, they're always a, a little bit bigger than what your wheel dyno would be. They're safer, easier, um, you know, and I, I like them and someday we'll probably have one. As a matter of fact, uh, talking about safety, I have had uh, drive shafts fall out of the ch cars on the dyno. Literally had a drive shaft come out of it sitting on the floor, spinning around sitting on the floor. Uh, also had a diesel truck, big horsepower diesel truck that blew up a tire. And I was standing like right in this area right here looking at the screen just like right that and uh, tire blows up sounds like a semi tire when the in, in throwing rubber just like a semi tire all over the shop and believe it or not it takes the side of the truck bed off peels it off I'm standing right here and I feel stuff flying past my head I duck out because I can hear it, everything I mean it's just horrendously loud blah, 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 blah complete chaos and it literally threw this my shop is 150 foot long by 100 foot wide you can see the dyno room is over there and the office is up there it threw chunks of rubber all the way up there from here that's a good solid 100 foot 20 foot high ceiling 23 foot high ceilings here it threw those chunks of rubber like a little two three pound chunks of rubber uh, <laughs> through the air that far so I mean it was violent uh, so don't stand by the chassis dyno don't be near it don't do any of that stuff but all things said and done the chassis dynos are really simple easy things uh, good method of uh, obviously of doing any tuning and you're also finding out issues or problems that are in the motor or I'm sorry in the truck or in the car so uh, most all the time I like to engine dyno and I know the engine's right, everything's cool. In fact, the only reason I even have a chassis dyno, the only reason I ever got one was because I got tired of, I would dyno a motor, I would have the customer there with me on the dyno. 
We would take it off the dyno, running. Everybody's happy, high-fiving each other. Everything's cool. He put it in his car. Something would be wrong. It doesn't run right. He thinks immediately there's something wrong with the motor. There's nothing wrong with the engine. There's always something else going on from, from the flywheel back. There's always some kind of problem. Uh, that, that's the eddy current on here, so that, that applies extra load to slow things down if I want to slow down, to, uh, slow down uh, the acceleration of it. But anyways, I ended up doing that whole thing for the sole reason of there's always a wiring problem, there's always some kind of mechanical problem. You're going to find converter issues. Uh, all the losses that you find in between the back of the motor to the to the ground or to the wheel or to the hub so all of those losses are all there and you find any of those kind of problems so typical losses that you're gonna see uh, stick shift cars have the least loss because there's no torque converter there's not as much transmission there uh, anywhere from usually 10 to 15 percent and then automatics are uh, typically 20 25 percent if you get into a lot of the overdrive units because we do a lot of that drag week stuff where they'll have an actual gear vendors overdrive unit behind it on top of a you know on top of the transmission or like 4l uh, 4l ade stuff do a lot of those kind of transmissions and tr and cars and they always seem to have about 25 uh up sometimes up to 30 percent like in my blazer which is just a straight out street truck um you know it definitely has a a, a lot of uh, loss involved in that so those are kind of loss numbers that you're going to be figuring out so you can multiply that back in to figure out if it makes a thousand horsepower at the tire how much it actually ends up making at the crankshaft you have a good rough idea if you never had an engine dyno uh, 